And this fella came up to me uh, doing some work in this area, South Bank in London, if you know where I am. Big Jordy, Newcastle fan saying, what is going on at my club? When are we going to appoint somebody? They moved in yesterday and got Conte, they being Tottenham. Trevor, this is the theme at the moment. Newcastle fans are getting impatient. And then last night, they thought it was going to be Unai Emery. Until the much-respected Guillaume Balagay changed that. And Guillaume has come out with, Emery will reject any approach from Newcastle. Um, the latest is that he's going to stay with Villarreal yep. from now until the end of the season and he ain't going to go. Now, mm. the suggestion being, Trevor, that there is a lack of vision, maybe a lack of direction on the part of the new owners. What's your take on this? It looked like Emery last night and certain <coughs> sections of the written media were going with that and then all of a sudden, a different direction. He's well, not coming. Well, apart from... Unai wanting to prove a lot of people wrong in England because he did struggle when he was at Arsenal. I think he'd lose a lot of credibility if he left Villarreal, a Champions League side um, where he's been doing very well, uh, won the Europa League, to go to a relegation fight at yeah. Newcastle. Yeah. And that's not being harsh on Newcastle. And I know they're, they're going to have all the money they need to spend on players, but that's not until two months' time. No, it's a relegation so they, fight. So they yeah. could be so far behind by that stage why would he take that job if it wasn't for either wanting to prove yourself in the Premier League, which, you know, you can look back and that would be a genuine reason, or yeah. from winner. And I think he's kept his credibility. He's staying at a Champions League competing side and he's uh, trying to do a great job at Villarreal, which he's doing. So what are they going to do? I mean, Simon, I'm going to come to you in a second, but what are they going to do? Well, this is my this, this is why I said, why would you get rid of Steve Bruce? And listen, I know the fans are going to pile on me for this. That'll go down well. If... You're, you've not got somebody lined up. Now, with the piracy w w rule which got dropped in, in the kingdom and that seemed to happen overnight, I think it's it's caught the board out by surprise and they've not got their ducks in a row. So, But still, they listen to the fans, they listen to the media, they got rid of Steve Bruce, who, by the way, i seen him at the cricket in Sports City in Dubai with his son Alex, looked very relaxed. So I'm pleased about that because oh, he, he was in a bad situation. Yeah, and, yeah. and I, horrendous situation that nobody wants to be in yeah but Graham Jones has gone in there he can't reinvent the wheel you're working with a group of players where you've got a bit of threat going forward midfield wise and defensively I don't think they're up to scratch to be able to compete in the Premier League yeah and it doesn't matter who takes that side for the next two months until they can start bringing money in uh, sorry players in with the money that they've got I don't think they're going to be as competitive they, are as they, they going to go down it depends who they recruit both manager Foot, director of football and players from the 1st of January. Simon, is this is this fast become the tainted job? Um, well, it's only tainted because of the current predicament that Newcastle find themselves in at the bottom peer, tier of the, of the Premier League. There's two ways of looking at it, you know, Emery. He could take the opportunity because it may not come again for him because the riches that you, you, you Newcastle are going to have are going to be substantial, so he gets in early. Or he stays with a proper football operation at the moment in time, which is Villarreal. Now, you've got to realise that it's one thing having a PR girl running around shouting about how this takeover happens. It's another thing that a PR girl running a football club. And people are going to take offence at that and they're going to suggest that I've got some agenda against Amanda Stavely. But everything doesn't have to be played out in front of the camera. If you're going to brief the media and you're going to run around shining a spotlight on you, you better deliver. There's a difference between how a football club runs in reality and how you think it runs as a PR person. Right. And whatever you think about Daniel Levy and whatever you think, don't think about Daniel Levy, the football operation that Tottenham had was able, financially and economically and logistically and structurally, to be able to convince Antonio Conte to come and work for them. They can't get Una Emery, whose stock is, is replenished but still diminished in this country, mm. to come and take on a project and they're running around briefing the media and making themselves look like a laughing stock. And from what I understand, that they, they, the, the chairman of Villarreal has pushed back most stridently against his manager and reminding him of his obligations. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the bottom line is, is that it may still happen because in football these things turn quickly. But the way this is being played out is classic PR stuff. Football does operate this way at times, but not to the point where every single nuanced peculiarity and transaction is being conducted in the front of the media. And the reason that why that is, is because that's what Amanda Stavely does. And football people like that, that to some point, but there's also an element of substance that has to happen behind it. And Newcastle aren't in a situation right now where they can just simply sell themselves. They've got mm. to do it slightly better. And being all flash for cash isn't just the answer. Well, after speculation surrounding Fonseca, Ten Hag, Gerard Lampard, and now Emery. The list, the list grows by the day, Eddie to Howe. be honest here. Well, Eddie Howe, and Eddie Howe's still in there. So he did incredible work at Bournemouth. He did. We're all agreed on that. Yeah. Um, the bottom line is, is he now the option? Well, he could be. I mean, just going back on what you just said there, Simon, you know, similar to 
Uh, David Moyes, um, when he was at Manchester United, he obviously had a bad situation there, went off, had a, had a stint at Sunderland, Real Sociedad, Rebuilt, yeah. came back. And when he came back to West Ham, don't forget, they were down the bottom of the league. Yeah. He had a real job to do to try and keep them in the Premier League. Yes. Did that superbly yeah. well, lost yeah. his job to Pellegrini. And do you think the same thing and the same kind of opportunity for Unai Emery is there with Newcastle? And it, would you say going away, winning the Europa League, doing what he's done at Villarreal would put him in a, in a similar kind of vein as a better manager with more experiences to come back to Newcastle and do a better job than he did at well, Arsenal. I mean, OK, so his baseline is being successful managing in Spain. Yep. So he goes to the UK, does a reasonable job at Arsenal, ends up finding himself vilified, yep. goes back to his baseline. Right, His baseline is being moderately successful in Spain with a Spanish side. So when you look at that and say... Well, OK, he's proven himself in Spain. We know he can operate in Spain. He's gone back to Spain and proven he can operate in Spain. It doesn't necessarily mean that you put him back into an environment so where he struggled before. Of course... Because David Moyes did it at Everton. And you're the sum of all your parts, yeah. and David's yeah. redemption was a long time coming. Mm. You know, it took a long time for him to, to get rid of the image of Manchester United, and then he went to Sociedad, and that wasn't a great situation for him. Then he made a bit of a holics of it at Sunderland and got himself into situations that he said things that people didn't think that were, were right about their relegation and... Mm -hmm. and castigating a female <clears throat> journalist and whatever else he did or didn't do. And right. it took some time to get him back into a situation where he regained his chops. Now, Unai Emery, like all football managers, have hides like rhinos because they can appear out of left field to come back into the... Into, after getting sacked everywhere and come back again. Do I think he's the answer for Newcastle? Depends what the question is. Is the question... He gets us out of a relegation battle. He builds us for the long term. I think. I think you park Emery Simon. I think you start looking at how. You park him up, yeah. And I think you park it. And possibly how now? And when you look at how, you begin to think. Do you know what? Yeah, Stephen Chesham. We need to get Eddie Howe in now to help us out of the Championship yeah. next season. He knows that division. <laughs> right. That's how far. Look, you know, that's how uh, much Newcastle fans are looking ahead. And you, what we shouldn't forget, Eddie Howe's a specialist in this area. Yeah, well, he's he, a specialist in it and when you think of Callum Wilson he went from League One striker to England International under Eddie Howe he makes decent players better yeah he does and he's and he's, he's had that um, success rate going from League One with Bournemouth to the Premier League he sustained that Premier League status for a number of years um, I think this the size of the stadium there's lots of other things that go against Bournemouth but yeah. I think ultimately he did. A, everyone looks at that and says he did a really good job at Bournemouth I think he's a, he's a manager that He's enthusiastic, he's young enough. I think players will respond to him. Right, the yes only, or no, only, would you give him it? We're going to hit the break. Yes or no? The only, the only question, Matt, would be, is he big enough to recruit big players to Newcastle, which is they, what they want? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.